This is the web series for the love of BIM, promoting Barbados, everything Bajan Canadian, and everything Canadian Bajan. Welcome to another episode in the web series for the love of BIM. I am your host, Consul General Sonia Marvel Carter, and Christmas is fast approaching. We are in the month of December. But for this and maybe a couple more episodes, I want to bridge a little bit of November and our independence season with December. Last week I said we would talk a little bit about the events and boy did we have spectacular events last weekend. Show of hands of how many persons attended all of the virtual independence events last weekend. Yes? Okay, great. Weren't they superb? Calgary started out hot on Friday night with a taste of BIM and all the artists had us rocking. It was a three hour party atmosphere. Um, and then Saturday, wow, I, I can't even begin to describe Saturday. It was phenomenal and we have been getting excellent feedback all week long. Didn't even realize until the stats were, were released that we were over, there were over 50,000 people watching the event on Saturday on at least five or six platforms. It was Zoom, YouTube, Facebook, IG, Twitter, as well as One Caribbean TV. Then the independence service on Sunday rounded off the weekend very nicely, incorporating many of the faith-based organizations as we gave thanks to God for the many blessings which he has bestowed on our island home. And Monday was a day of ledger for those of us for whom it was also a holiday, but for those who had to work as usual, I'm, I'm sure you still enjoyed the day. Unfortunately, though, there were a few content items which were not showcased during the Canada Hour on the Saturdays We Still Gathering event due to some technical difficulties and, and time issues. But it is my intention to showcase them over the next few episodes to ensure that all of your hard work, effort and talent are duly recognized and celebrated. And I will start off with the winner of the Barbados Canada Association's talent competition from the November 21st Independence Gala, Barbados Strong, Together We Stand, that event. And her name is Teresa Savory, and she will be performing a gospel piece called Be Still and Know That I Am God. Be still and know that I am God. Be still and know that I am God. Be still and know that I That he let thee. I am the Lord. That he let thee. I am the Lord. That he let thee. Be still and that I am God. Be still and know that I am God. Be still and know that Simply beautiful, Teresa. Thank you for that performance and congratulations on winning the first ever talent competition that the Barbados Canada Association held during our independence. And I know that you were also logged on on Saturday to the Zoom platform. I heard one of the MCs, Kurt Brown, shout you out and commented on how theatrical your name sounded. So keep singing, 
keep performing, and I hope that you make great use of the studio time, which is also part of your prize. Next up, we will hear from Sheena Strickland, a young Barbadian studying music therapy here in Canada. I'd actually never heard of anyone in Barbados certified in music therapy, so it was wonderful to be introduced to Sheena and the field of study she's pursuing, and the fact that she wants to return home and practice in that field of study, which she believes can be of tremendous benefit. But I'll let Sheena tell you about her journey. Hello everyone, my name is Sheena Strickland. I am a musician and I'm currently a music therapy intern. I hear from the parish of St. Lucie, Connor Town, St. Lucie, to be precise. I migrated to Wolfville, Nova Scotia in 2017 to pursue my studies in the Bachelor's of Music Therapy at Acadia University. And in August of this year, I came to Windsor, Ontario, where I currently reside, and I am completing my internship at Community Partnership, also known as CUP, in hopes to receive my accreditation to become a certified music therapist. For as long as I can remember, I always wanted to do music and I had a love of music. And I always wanted to share it with those around me. This love began in church, singing in choirs, and I continued doing that through my primary and secondary school at Ignatius Bayer and Corrigan Pari, where I performed in numerous competitions like NIFCA. I applied and got accepted to the Barbados Community College where I study an associate degree in music. My time spent there at BCC was life-changing because I surrounded myself with musicians and teachers such as Roger Giddens, Dr. Stefan Walcott, and Andre Woodvine, many others as they lived, breathed, spoke, and communicated in music. My classical training also started at BCC under the tutelage and guidance of Mrs. Dion Dimity and Ms. Evelyn McLean and it was there that I started to understand the foundation of classical music and the benefits that it has with my voice. I chose to do my internship at Community Partnership under the guidance of certified music therapist Paulina Gillette because she spoke about using music therapy in low-income communities and she showed me that there can still be a benefit of individuals enjoying music and receiving the full attention that they deserve. I am currently in my second month of internship and from my experience here, I have learned so much about music therapy and understanding the importance of using music therapy in a social work setting. My career plan after my internship is to take the Canadian Board of Music Therapy exam. When I receive my official accreditation and become a certified music therapist, my goal is to continue expanding my knowledge of music therapy and how it benefits numerous populations. Another goal that I have is to start a music therapy business in Barbados and establish clients there. When I think about how I can use music therapy in our island of Barbados, thoughts come to mind of taking music within the hospitals and clinics, institutions for mental illness, geriatric hospitals, schools, correctional facilities, private sessions with clients and group settings, and also working with individuals who are frontline workers, which are police, firemen, doctors and nurses, and in community programs. I want to start a practice in Barbados and working with businesses who see the need of music therapy because I recognize and I truly believe that music therapy in our island can be very beneficial within communities, in hospitals, in working with clients and just individuals and populations that benefit from having music around them. Some of the interventions that would be used in these populations are singing, playing with instruments, composing music or songwriting, discussing of preferred music, using imagery with music and listening to music and the environment. The purpose behind these interventions are to stimulate language and motor centers in the brain for articulation, breath control, fine and gross motor coordination, range of motion, joint mobility, and strength. It is used to share and express feelings, experiences, and ideas in a safe environment, reflecting unconscious and unconscious information related to the individual's life. As you can see, there are many possibilities with introducing music therapy to our island and 
I hope that you have a better understanding of how music helps the friends and families that are close to us. Thank you, Sheena, for sharing this interesting course of study with us. We all could use a little more music in our lives. And yes, music is most definitely therapeutic. I will ask you now to prepare yourselves for the talented comedic stylings of Standpipe Productions. Now, this group is a very recent addition to the Bajan Canadian comedy landscape. Um, born out of a need for some comic relief at our Independence Gala in 2019, four persons came together to form what is now known as Standpipe Productions. Their pieces are truly entertaining and have been well received. One of their members has actually worked with Laugh It Off and other comedy shows in Barbados. And now tonight we feature a piece with two members of the group, Riva, a Canadian Bajan, and Tony, very much Bajan Canadian. Enjoy. Good evening and welcome to COVID Impacts, the show that investigates the impact that COVID-19 has had on our fair art. This evening, we'll be speaking to one brave entrepreneur. Good evening. Evening. Hi, mommy. This, right, this way, right over here. Awesome, uh, thank yeah. you. Oh, uh, um, sorry. My name is Robert, and I, 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 I am a young entrepreneur, you know? I, I just, like deal with like, like, like helping people downsize and get rid of things that they don't necessarily need. You know, that, that's my business. Oh, so uh, assisting people with their uh, embracing the minimalistic lifestyle. That's it. That's what we're going with, yeah. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. So tell me, how was business before COVID? You know, before COVID, business was good. I mean, like, I was getting like two or three new clients like every week. I, 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 I was operating in what you call a financial surplus. You know what I mean? And I get to travel all over the world, all over the world. I went to like, I went to like St. Lucie, I went to St. Joseph, I went to St. Andrew, then it was like, like Christchurch, like, like every part you could think about in the world, I went. Yeah, yeah. That's wonderful. So how has business changed and how have you been impacted by COVID-19? Man, look. COVID just upset everything. Like, how are we supposed to help people down? So as if they're always home, like it can't work out, it doing it. Like, let me show you what happened, right? This one time I went like to a new client. It was a new client that I went by. And I would tell you where it was, but that's like confidential, right? And I did like picking, like picking at certain things, you know, and trying to figure out how it gonna work. And, 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 and then when I when I when I uh, picked the lock, I mean, open the door, she was right there. She was right there, and it jumped me, and I started to stutter. So, but no, but no, got another time because I'm glad you asked me this question because I I was calling this in for so long. So I was at another client house, and I was like helping she like go through she jewelry, right? To see what, what was the real jewelry and what was unreal, and like what could take away for I mean, like what could like make lighter for her and make she live easier. <laughs> the woman was in the bathroom, big man. <laughs> and sneak up behind me with a belt and cut my ass. Wait, boss man, you a thief? <laughs> I said, don't say so, all of this. <laughs> That's all we have for tonight. Thank you. Thank you so very much, Standpipe Productions. Riva and Tony, extremely great as usual. <laughs> I think we all need to be aware of Robert, especially at this time of the year when people are trying their level best to help us downsize whether we agree or not. <laughs> now let's hear from our very own Kevin, the voice, Carrington, as he introduces one of the members of the diaspora nominated for special recognition during our independence celebrations. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Kevin Carrington, CBC News reporter and public figure here in Toronto. Gustavus Adolphus Hollingsworth, Barbadian residing in Quebec, Canada, and retired healthcare consultant. Gus's career commenced at the psychiatric hospital in Barbados on May 5, 1957, as a male nurse. 
He immigrated to England and completed his registered mental nurse or RMN training before coming to Canada in 1965. He started at Douglas Hospital as a nursing assistant because men were not registered as nurses at the time and the position of registered psychiatric nurse or RPN was not an established position east of Ontario at that time either. Now by 1977, Gus left for New Brunswick to become the first male director of nursing at the English Psychiatric Hospital. He retired in 2002 and established the Haggis Consulting Limited and consulted for private and public organizations in New Brunswick before returning to Quebec. Gustavus Hollingsworth has sought to give back to his community and his homeland Barbados and in his spare time he is the board member of the New Brunswick Nursing Association, the Association of Nursing Homes, a regional chair of the Canadian Council of Health Services Executives and chair of the Nursing Home Administrators in New Brunswick. He was established as an external consultant to the Barbados Elderly Care Association back in 2009 and surveyed veterans and long-term care with the Canadian Legion and Department of Veteran Affairs for three years. He is the founding member of the Beds to Barbados project, providing good used beds and equipment to the geriatric and district hospitals in 2009 until the program was adopted by Barbados House in Montreal in 2013 when Gus joined the executive council there and served as chairman not only in 2014, 2015, 17 and 18 and has since been secretary since 2019. We salute Gustavus Adolphus Collingsworth for his stellar contribution both in Canada and Barbados and in the areas of nursing and healthcare. Well done, Gus. Bravo and happy independence. Thank you, Kevin. And all that is left for me to do now is to congratulate Gustavus Adolphus Hollingsworth for being recognized on the excellent work that he has done over the years in nursing and his contribution to our island home Barbados as well as his present home Canada. But before I sign off the evening let me remind you of the toy drive organized by the Caribbean event which is an affiliate of the Grant Morris Foundation. Gifts for children 12 years and under are being collected. They started from December 1st and they're continuing until December 15th. Make a child smile this year by donating a gift, and here's how. You can send your e-transfers to info at grantmorrisfoundation.org. It's actually right there. Info at grantmorrisfoundation.org. Or you can drop off your toys at Grant's house or the community house, as it's more familiarly known between 3 p.m. and 9 p.m. Remember to disinfect the toys and place them in a plastic bag. We're still in the midst of the COVID-19 pandemic and that we definitely do not want to share. Also, to be eligible for a prize of Grant's famous fruitcake, attach your name to the gift and you will be eligible, but we'll tell you more about that next week. That's all the time we have today, folks. Continue to follow the protocols, even though it's Christmas and we may have lots to do or want to do lots of things, but don't take any unnecessary chances. Be safe. Mm -hmm.